there's a horror thriller movie current like not that movie sorry musical currently playing in the lyceum theater right now um i saw a little like short about it from wait in the wings um youtube channel and it got me thinking about something it got me thinking about the fact that he made a video about a certain movie getting their own musical that certain movie is evil dead that's right ladies and gentlemen there was an evil dead musical and you could still technically see it because there's a tour right now um but i haven't seen it yet but i know what you're thinking why would you make evil dead a musical well you see it all started in college you see this dude in canada he was like man rocky horror is a good musical and a good movie so how can i i want to do the same thing and then he rented evil dead and blockbuster and he was like man i want to make that a musical and he did he combined the first two movies into the musical and also sprinkled in a little bit of um army of darkness so yeah the plot is very similar of course to evil dead and evil dead 2 because um you see in this version of like the whole evil dead thing um what they did was they put five college students who spent the weekend in an abandoned cabin in the woods and they you know released some oogie boogie monsters um, in this musical, they put in, um, Ash's sister, Cheryl, and his girlfriend, Linda. Um, she wasn't in the first movie. Cheryl was in the first movie. And then they retconned, well, not retconned, they technically remade the second movie, but this time they added Linda, Ash's, Ash's, you know, girlfriend. Uh, the musical takes creative liberty with the plot lines of the movies, mixing together the characters and concepts of all three, as well as changing sequences for the sake of the stage and comedic intent. Roughly, the first act adapts the original um, Evil Dead movie, while the second adapts Evil Dead 2. I heard originally they were gonna do some Army of Darkness shit where, like, Ash gets sent back in time and, you know, skeletons come out of nowhere. So, um, now that I've read you the plot and, um, told you what it's about, let's get on to the production. After getting approval from Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell, the show was first staged as a workshop in Toronto in August 2003. The same team remounted the musical in Toronto that October for an additional three weeks. The show was presented in July 2004 at the 22nd Just for Laughs Comedy Festival in Montreal. Now, before we get into more of the production, it's important I mention a very important thing. Things they don't teach you in school. In 2003, there was a widespread power outage to the parts of the northeastern and midwestern United States, as well as most parts of the Canadian province of Ontario, on Thursday, August 14, 2003, beginning just after 4.10 p.m. Most places restored power by midnight within seven hours, some as early as 6 p.m. on August 14, um, within two hours, while the New York subway resumed in limited service around 8 p.m. Full power was restored to New York City and parts of Toronto on August 16th. I know what you're thinking. Amy, why the heck did you give us a whole history lesson? Well, you see, this power outage nearly cost the Evil Dead Musicals show. The cast and crew of the show had to perform the show on the front lawn of the Transact Club in Toronto. The band played acoustic instruments and cast members provided sound effects from backstage. As the evening wore on, flashlights and car headlights were used to illuminate the actors. We're all jammed in the car, and we're going really far. Driving deep into the trees. So, after, um, you know, they did all that, oh shit, I forgot to mention the off-Broadway and the Toronto arrival. I'll mention it here, since for the subsequent productions, we're going to be talking about the Ultimate the 4D experience and the North American tour and the high school version and, um, additional regional productions. We're just going to combine it all here anyway, because I really, I don't, I don't feel like editing it out right now. I don't. So, in the off-Broadway and the Toronto revival... Um, they had the, ca they, um, used the same cast as always, um, and the New York Off-Ray production started previews on October 2nd, 2006, the official opening night performance was on November 1st, and it ran performing eight times per week at the New York, at the New World stages, which I think I've been there, I can't remember when, and it's pissing me off. Anyways, the cast for, um... The off Broadway production, and I think the Toronto production, was um, Ryan Ward as Ash, Jenna Coker as Cheryl, um, Annie slash Shelley as, um, well, Annie, 
I guess two people, whatever. Renee Clapmayer played Annie and Shelley. Uh, Jake was played by Daryl Winslow. Scott was played by Brandon Wardwell. Linda, Jennifer Byron, and Ed and Moose um, as Tom, whatever. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, Evil Dead came back to Toronto after being in New York. Um, and it once again had Ryan Ward as Ash. And they played at the Diesel House on May 1st, 2007. And, um... It was supposed to last until um, June. It ended up extending uh, to August and then to September and then June 2008 and then September 2008. It celebrated its 300th performance on June 26, 2008, which marked it as the longest running Canadian production in Toronto in 20 years. It also won two awards. Well, won the award. It won the Dora Audience Choice Award and was played by the Toronto Star. Can I just say before we get into the sub subsequent productions that Ryan Ward. I, like, I can't imagine anyone else even trying to play Ash because Bruce Campbell made Ash so perfect that I could never imagine anyone else even trying to play him. But I want to see Ryan Ward as Ash one day. I need that man somewhere. We need this man. I, I mean, I feel like he kind of looked like Ash and, like, he even acted like Ash. Well, obviously, because he's an actor. But I feel like I was seeing Bruce Campbell on stage somehow, which, I mean, he did end up meeting Bruce Campbell, as you'll see in this clip. <laughs> series called Burn Notice Woo! for the USA Network, which no one gets up here, unfortunately, oh. except a few of you. He needs no introduction. What we're going to do before he does his talk back is we're going to take a photo, but ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bruce Campbell. Woo! subsequent production. So, over 300 productions of Evil Dead the Musical have since been staged by professional, amateur, and school theater groups throughout North America and around the world in cities including Seoul in 2008 and Tokyo Madrid in 2012. So, they had this show called The Ultimate 40 Experience, which I can only imagine how that was because of the blood and stuff. So, on June 22nd, 2012, Cirque Michaels Productions brought the show to the Las Vegas Strip as a resident open-ended production at the V Theater. The production is now officially the longest starting production in the history of the show. Due to the nature of the show, including the addition of 100 seats, 100 seat splatter zone, audience interaction, multimedia elements, and stage of the art effects, lights and sound, the name was altered to slightly include Ultimate 40 Experience to reflect production and design elements that separate the production from other stages of the show. The show moved to the Tommy Wynn Theater on December 1st, 2015, and to the Windows Showroom at Bally's on September 5th, 15th, 2017. Uh, for the North American tour, uh, the, the first tour was primarily cast out of Chicago, Illinois. It spent four weeks rehearsing there before it opened in Madison, Wisconsin on, um... Anyways, it then toured to Austin, Texas before returning to Chicago for a three-week engagement at the Broadway Playhouse. The cities on the tour schedule included Sandusky, Ohio, Fort Wayne, Illinois, not Illinois, wait, um, Indianapolis, I think. Um, and then Effingham, Illinois, Nashville, Tennessee, Cleveland, Ohio, Greenville, New York, Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, jeez. Shens... I can't pronounce, um, Shens... Whatever. Hamilton, uh, okay, and then two of them were in, um, Montreal. Uh, and then Charlotte, New... North Carolina, I don't know why I can't remember these words. Tampa, Florida, Sarasota, Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and then made its way to New York... New Jersey, um, York, Pennsylvania, Mesa, Arizona, and Dayton, Ohio. Uh, this production was produced by Starva. Okay, we don't need to know any of that shit. Uh, um, we don't need to know the cast anyway, whatever. Uh, licensing rights uh, for the high school version of Evil Dead the Musical with none of the swearing all the blood were made available by a dramatic publishing company following a world premiere at Stage Door Manor in Lock Sheldwell. I've never heard of this place. Anyways, um... Yeah, so, we have some additional regional productions, which, um, I, I think I might, I, I might leave this out. This is a bit much. Hot dogs, chips, and cheese, to make the week go quicker, we packed a ton of liquor, Ryan Tropicana will not tell the leave bananas. Now that we're on to the musical numbers, I need to, um, say something a bit, like, you know, 
to, to for you to understand. 2003 had different um, songs compared to 2006 because, you know, they had to add new things and they also had to change certain things. So for Act 1 in 2003, they had Cabin in the Woods, which is a song you've been hearing in the background, by the way. Uh, Houseware Employees, It Won't Let Us Leave, Look Who's Evil Now, What the Fuck Was That, Join Us, Good Old Reliable Jake, I'm Not a Killer. It ends, and then we have a reprise of that song, Bit Part Demon, All the Men in My Life Keep Getting Killed by Candoranian Demons, Do the Necronomicon, It's Time, and Hail to the King. Obviously, when it hit Broadway, they had to change certain things, for, and especially the ending, and they even added, I think, a bit more songs. Um, act 1 is the same. I'm looking through it. Um, act one, act one is a bit the same. Not really though. They added a new, a new song after. Um, wait, did they know? Hold on. Uh... No, they did. They did add a new song. So after good old reliable Jake, um, before Ash sings, I'm not a killer. There's a reprise of Houseware Employees. Um, and there's that. So it's the same thing, but after good old reliable Jake. Which, this time, it's not just Jake singing it, it's uh, Jake, Annie, and Ed. Um, and Join Us includes Cheryl, um, Moose, and House Spirits. Uh, again, it is very different, you know, and stuff like that. So after Act 1 ends, Act 2 begins with I'm Not a Killer. And um, after All the Men in My Life Keep Getting Killed by Candoranian Demons, they add this song called Ode to an Accidental Stabbing before Do the Necronomicon. And then, um, instead of Hail to the King, they add two more songs called We Will Never Die and Blew That Bitch Away. Because according to, I think, the creators, they wanted to add, like, um, a Time Warp song, so they did Blew That Bitch Away. From what I remember, the ending, um, in 2003 was very different to the ending in 2006, because the ending in 2003 ends with what happened in Evil Dead 2, Ash getting sent back in time and being found by the knights. Obviously, they changed that to sprinkle in a little bit of Army of Darkness, but not too much of Army of Darkness. And stuff like that. Spring break vacation is just plain, plain. There's something in this musty air makes us want to sing. Cabin in the woods, ooh. I decided to add this in because... Why not? Um, the cast recording. Um, an original cast recording was made in December 2006 and was released on April 2nd, 2007 and debuted at number four on the Billboard, Billboard show charts. A live cast recording of the Ultimate 4D experience was made in early 2014 and was released on in the summer of 2014. Currently, it is scheduled to only be available at performances of the show, which are based in LA, so I guess all my LA, um, you know, subscribers, y'all just blessed, you lucky bastards. <laughs> Yeah, we're five college students on our way to an old